we are asked to describe the transformation in graph y equals 3 times secant of the quantity pi x plus pi over 2 plus 1. We will describe the transformation in the form y equals a times secant of the quantity bx plus c plus d. Where normally when graphing sine and cosine, the absolute value of a is equal to the amplitude, but remember the secant function and cosecant function has no amplitude. So notice how in our case a is 3, so let's make a note that a is equal to three, but also state no amplitude. Next, two pi divided by b is equal to the period. Notice in our case, b, the coefficient of x is pi. So two pi divided by b is equal to two pi divided by pi, which gives us two, and therefore the period is two, or two units. Next, negative c divided by b is equal to the phase or horizontal shift, where in our case again, b is equal to pi, and c is equal to positive pi over two. So negative c divided by b is equal to negative, or the opposite of pi over two, divided by b, which again is pi. Dividing by pi is equivalent to multiplying by the reciprocal of one over pi, and therefore this is equal to negative pi over two times one over pi. Simplifying before multiplying, pi divided by pi simplifies to one, this is equal to negative one half. Because the phase shift is negative one half, the shift is left half of a unit. And then finally d is equal to positive one, because d is equal to positive one, the vertical shift is up one unit. From here, before we graph the given secant function, we will graph the corresponding cosine function. Since secant theta and cosine theta are reciprocals of one another, their graphs share some important properties. Notice how where the cosine function values at the midpoint, the corresponding secant function has a vertical asymptote. Also notice how the location of the max and min values of the cosine function are also points on the corresponding secant function. And finally, where cosine is concave down, secant is concave up, and where cosine is concave up, secant is concave down. Using these properties and graphing the corresponding cosine function will help us make a nice accurate graph of the given secant function. So for the next step, we will graph the corresponding cosine function, which is y equals three times cosine of the quantity pi x plus pi over two plus one. The period, phase shift, and vertical shift will all be the same for this cosine function, but here because a is three, the amplitude is equal to three, and because a is positive, there is no reflection across the midline. So to begin graphing this cosine function, because the vertical shift is up one unit, Let's sketch the midline, which is y equals one. So here's y equals one, and therefore this is the midline. The amplitude is positive three, so if we go up three units, we'll be at a y value of four, which will be the maximum cosine function value. If we go down three from positive one, we'll be down here at negative two, which will be the minimum cosine function value. Next, the phase shift is negative one half, or left one half of a unit, and we normally start graphing the cosine function along the y-axis, so if we have a shift left half of a unit, we will graph one period of the corresponding cosine function starting at x equals negative one half, because the period is equal to two. If we add two to negative one half, we have one and a half, or three halves. Let's just say three halves is here, so over this interval here, we have one complete graph of the corresponding cosine function. And now we need to divide this into four equal subintervals. So we'll divide it in half, and then in half again. Each of these subintervals has a width of the period divided by four, or two fourths, which is one half. So we have negative one half, zero, one half, one, and three halves. So now we'll graph the corresponding cosine function starting at x equals negative one half and ending at positive three halves. So again, now we'll follow the pattern of the basic cosine function over one period, which is 
maximum, midline, minimum, midline, maximum. So at x equals negative one half, we're at a maximum function value of four. At x equals zero, we're at the midline. At x equals one half, we are down at a minimum of negative two, then back to the midline, back up to the maximum. Let's sketch this piece of the corresponding cosine function, which looks like this. And let's continue the graph to the right and to the left. So we'll count by one halves. Three halves plus one half is four halves or two. Two plus one half is two and a half or five halves. Five halves plus one half is three. Following the same pattern, we have midline, minimum, midline. So here's more of the graph to the right. And to the left, here we would have negative one, where we would be back at the midline. And now we can sketch an accurate graph of the given secant function. Again, where the cosine function is at the midline, the secant function will have a vertical asymptote, which means we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative one, x equals zero, x equals one, x equals two, and x equals three. And again, the max and min function values on the cosine function are also points on the corresponding secant function and where the cosine function is concave down, the secant function is concave up. So starting on the left, one piece of the given secant function would look like this, where this is one point on the graph, and then the graph is concave up, approaching the vertical asymptotes. This piece would be concave down, approaching the vertical asymptotes. This piece is concave up. This piece is concave down. So the blue graph is the graph of the given secant function. I hope you found this helpful.